Welcome to the recording for the last unit in digital photography and this unit is called Using Your Photographs. In the Using Your Photographs you can see that there are two photo assignments, photo assignment 9 and 10. And of course I'll do separate recordings for the photo assignments. This is all about the unit. Before we jump into it, I'm going to go up to the course home area as always. And the course home, look at week 5. Because week 5 You've already looked at this, I hope. Week 5 has the Tuesday work, is black and white uh, photography unit, and then the Thursday work, or Thursday, Friday work, however you want to do it, is this unit on using your photographs. So that's how this unit works into the course. So as you look at this, you have photo assignment 9, photo assignment 10, and then the unit exam that you'll do for this. All right, let's jump right back into using your photographs. And you'll see there's no Class Connect write-up for this, so we're just going to go right, go right through the unit. So if you look at it, before digital imaging, if you wanted to share your pictures with family or friends, you handed them a stack of pictures. And, you know, your parents probably have stacks of pictures laying around or in a photo album or something that you can look at, right? And you, you selected the good ones, you put them in an envelope, and, and then you, you know, paid extra postage to send them to somebody or whatever it is. Um, you also, back then, when you got your pictures from the camera place, they even printed out for you the lousy ones, and you paid money for the lousy ones. Well, these days, of course, by doing digital, all you have are good pictures, because you can print those out on your, your home comp home uh, printer. And now, the photos are made are used for lots of things, you know, as a way to share with others. You can also put them in reports you do for school, put them in emails that you write, even, you know, put them on your, your flash stick or on your phone. Lots of things you can do with them. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this unit, things you can do with your pictures. So looking at, at your work, um, you know, you open an email and you get pictures. So people get pictures through the email all the time or you get them off of Twitter, wherever it happens to be. Sorry for the phone interruption. But anyway, using your photos in a number of ways is really the nice thing about digital photography these days. And, you know, this talks about how a person sends a picture through email and the picture wasn't prepared properly through email. I mean, maybe it was much too large, you couldn't download it. So it's really important that you think about how to send your pictures. Especially when you're doing a lot of digital photos on your phone, you don't want those images to be so large that they take up a lot of uh, memory space or storage space on your phone. So we're going to look at um, why to prepare images, steps to prepare images, and then apply some of the steps on given images. Here's a tutorial about personal uh, photojournalism. So the internet has really allowed a lot of digital, everybody to be involved in digital publishing. And a lot of you do this in, on Facebook and other methods. You might even have your own blog or website where you publish pictures and share with other people. That's what this is all about. And that's one thing you've learned in this class is your images need to be exactly what 
you want the audience to know. Of course, blogs, some people may have blogs, but Facebook has really taken the place of a lot of blog stuff because people can publish so easily on Facebook and share so easily. But there are still lots of people that have blogs where they post their daily lives. So thinking about photojournalism and how you're going to share the pictures you you take, that's important because you need to know how other people are going to look at your pictures. So as you look at this, preparing images for email. So that's one thing to think about. And email images, they need to be reduced in size for a couple of reasons. First, large photographs take a long time to download, especially people that have lower connect, slower connections. Second, is that you want people to be able to see them in their email window. You want people to have to open up the email and all that stuff, or open up the, the picture and all that. So preparing them for, for email is really important. You're going to do some scaling to prepare them for email. And one of the assignments, I think assignment nine, is preparing the images for email. So you want to think about this. So no wider than 500 pixels in, in uh, landscape and no taller than 375 pixels if it's in portrait mode. So you want to make sure that it's a fairly small image and you can do that with GIMP. You can change the size of your images and again you'll be doing that for photo assignment number nine which is where you're going to pretend you're sending photos through email. Images for the web. Images on the web need to be a little bit different too because um, there's the, the size, so 800 by 600 would be the maximum. Portrait mode, 450 by 600. But the other thing about the internet is you want to make sure there's no more than uh, uh, 75 uh, PPI, so points per inch, uh, because the internet can't show anything greater than that. So you just need to be careful in how you put things online. Of course, the other thing about this is that um, as this class was written, it's a little bit behind times now. Lots of web pages automatically size and fix your images for you when you post them online. For electronic presentations, this would be like for a PowerPoint. So if you're going to put pictures in PowerPoint or something like that, of course you're going to put them on the slides. And PowerPoint allows you to scale the image after you have it on the slide. So you have it on the slide, then you can go and grab the corner, make it active so it has handles, grab the corner of it, then you can slide it into the right size you want. So no more than 800 by 600 pixels if it's landscape, or 450 by 600 if it's uh, you know, going to be um, a, a portrait mode. So think about those things. And you can even in PowerPoint, you can adjust your picture right within PowerPoint. You almost don't even need a program like GIMP to fix once you have the, the picture in PowerPoint. So here's an activity, a drag and drop like you've seen before. So go ahead and finish that. Now desktop publishing, so using images for print. So this would be making your document, your images that you'd put on a piece of paper and print them out. And desktop publishing came in in the 1980s. And I used to do a lot of that. In fact, we used to have high school classes called desktop publishing, and lots of schools still do. And now it's more internet publishing, I think, is, or personal publishing. And that includes desktop publishing and internet type publishing. But personal computers allowed everybody to be a desktop publisher. You can make your own magazines, brochures, things like that. And of course now with the internet, 
then that allows everybody to be online publishers so you can hear see how things have evolved so back then it was called desktop publishing and now of course it's internet publishing is the next step of all this so desktop publishing you just need to you look at how you insert your your photographs into letters just so so it looks nice and that they're they're all readable and legible so you can see how you know, here's an example of how a picture might go into a word processing document and this the space down here that's called wrapping and lots of programs like word and others you can grab the picture and move it different places and then the text will wrap all around it but wrapping is an important component to that so this talks about you know, the different images how you can can select image you can insert pictures do all kinds of things you can adjust the image so once it gets on there you can adjust the size of it an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper start with uh, 1200 pixels in landscape mode and then portrait mode is 500 to 600 and then you can uh, shrink them down from there and do remember to always keep the aspect ratio meaning that you always keep the 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 um, width and the height the aspect of those similar you don't you want to like let's say this picture if that was on my page it would have handles on the corners and the sides you always want to grab it by the handle in the corner and size it because that side sizes this way and up and down equally if you grab the side handle then you're going to put the picture out of proportion okay great race go through this activity see what you know about uh, using your images and then of course you have the unit exam and if I slow down slide down here's the unit exam over here there's the unit exam preview now in this unit you have two photo assignments photo assignment 9 is where you're going to pretend that you're going to prepare pictures to email to someone and I'll have a larger explanation for this in the um, assignment descriptions recording and then photo 10 photo assignment 10 this is your own you're going to take photographs of things that are important to you. That's the only direction you have. So it could be people, places, things, whatever it happens to be. And this is going to be however you want to do this. You can use GIMP, you can send black and white color, whatever you want to do. But again, I'm going to do more of an explanation for these things in a separate recording under assignment descriptions. So that's all I have for you. I look forward to your work coming in. And thank you, everybody. This is the, the end of this course. Hope you've learned something. Bye.